So anyways, welcome everyone. Uh, and thank you for participating in this virtual conversation this afternoon. Before we begin, just a little bit of housekeeping. We're providing both Spanish translation, which you can turn on by clicking the interpretation button from the Zoom controls. And I'm actually gonna give the mic to Bert, who will say a few words in Spanish about our interpretation. Sure, thank you. Buenas tardes, las familias que necesiten escuchar en español. En la parte baja de la pantalla, hay un símbolo de un mundo en donde pueden hacer clic y seleccionar el idioma en español. Si están usando un celular, también en la parte baja de la pantalla va a ver la palabra more, más o tres puntos seguidos en donde también pueden seleccionar el idioma en español. Thank you. Thank you, Bert. We also have ASL interpretation. Thank you, Greg. Um, and uh, appreciate all of our, our staff and team for helping us make this possible. We have many participants joining us this evening, nothing like free money to get people onto a webinar. Um, and we wanted to make this more conversational. So it is not a, a Zoom webinar, it is a conversation, but we are gonna be muting all participants. And if you have a question, feel free to put it in English or Spanish in the chat and we'll make sure we get to it. Um, so I'm Nick Melvoin, board member for District 4, which spans from Westchester to Woodland Hills and the ocean to the Hollywood Hills. Proud to represent the West Side and West Valley, but representing all of our kids in LA Unified with my colleague, uh, Tanya Ortiz Franklin. And I'll hand it over to her quickly. Thanks, Nick. Yep, I'm Tanya Ortiz Franklin, your board member for District 7, which includes the wonderfully diverse communities of South Los Angeles, Watts, Gardena, Carson, down through the Harbor area to San Pedro. And like Nick said, we get to represent our communities, but also the entire district. And it's an honor to partner with you tonight, Nick, and to have a really important conversation with our families about taxes. We can build some knowledge and hopefully get more money into the pockets of our families. That is definitely the goal today. I know taxes can be dry. Not everybody is like me and has their copy of federal income taxation always at the ready, but we do hope to give you useful information today with our partners. Um, since last spring, we've hosted a series of town halls and uh, since Ms. Ortiz Franklin joined the board, we've been, uh, I've been honored to do some with her um, about school reopening, the social emotional health of our students, um, and I just remain so inspired by the resilience of our communities uh, as we navigate the reopening and recovery process. And you can find the recordings of our town halls on our Facebook page and on our website in English and Spanish. And thanks to all of our families for joining the new Board District 7 team. We've just been in office for a couple of months and we've had lots of listening sessions about reopening, about the budget and about black student achievement. So thank you for joining us for those and keep looking ahead to future conversations. You'll notice my background this week is Teacher Appreciation Week. It's actually all school staff appreciation week. So celebrate all of our educators and for the families on the line, I just have to say, you are our kids first and forever teachers. So this week is also about celebrating you and our shared education of our kiddos in LA Unified. <laughs> Indeed. And so a few more housekeeping things before we jump into the conversation about tax refunds and how you can get some money from the government. Uh, the conversation is being recorded and the video will be available for anyone that wants to refer to it afterwards on our website. If you have to leave early, if you just um, enjoy it so much, you want to repeat the fun uh, and we'll send out those links. If you would like the recording in a different language besides English or Spanish, please reach out and we'll do our best to accommodate. Thank you to those of you who submitted questions in advance. We'll try to get as many um, to as many questions as we can during the Q&A, but we may not have time to address all questions. Um, we'll do our best to monitor questions in the chat. If your question is not answered and you'd like a response, you can email bd4info at lusd.net or bd7 at lusd.net. And we'll put these in the chat right now uh, and um, we can ensure that you'll get a response from one of our offices after the town hall. Um, we're also going to post links in the Zoom chat throughout the, the conversation as resources are discussed. And resources are so helpful. The purpose of our town hall today is really to make sure you have all the information you need regarding this year's tax season. Unlike Nick, I do not keep my federal income tax book nearby. It was the hardest class in law school. And so I actually really appreciate what we're going to learn tonight because maybe it'll help me either with myself or with my family um, because this stuff can get really hard sometimes. There's been a lot of changes and it's great to have good information to navigate. So we also want to connect you with folks you can follow up with after today to make sure you have the best information to make the best decisions for your family, get all your questions answered, 
record and make sure, of course, you take advantage of any break available to you so we can get, like we said at the beginning, more money in the pockets of our families. <laughs> So we heard um, a little bit from Nick and me. We want to hear from you all. As Nick mentioned, this is what um, not a webinar style. It's a Zoom style meeting, so we can use the chat function. So please share in the chat your name, the schools you're connected with, and what you're looking forward to about our discussion. You can also start putting your questions in here, but we'd love to hear from you. Thanks, Emma, for dropping that in the chat. Who are you? What schools are you with? And what are you looking forward to? And as you're doing that, or right after you do that, we're gonna get a sense of the feelings in the room. We're gonna launch a poll in just a minute about, well, a couple seconds, about your experience with taxes this, this season so far. So have you filed, yes or no? And how do you feel? You can tell by just Nick and me, there are lots of feelings about taxes. <laughs> so take a second to answer the poll for us, please, so we can get a sense of who's in the room, how you're feeling, and that will help our presenters as well. Those votes are coming on in. And I should say, Tanya, this is my like cheat sheet for tax, so I didn't find it easy either. This is the, the horn book, as we call it, but I, today we'll be, we'll be joined by real lawyers, real tax lawyers. Um, and I just, taxes are complicated and the purpose of today's conversation is to make them less complicated and show you where you can go for resources. And there's a lot of us here um, and our partners most particularly who are um, have great resources to make this as easy as possible. So we'll, we'll maybe close the poll in a few seconds. It seems actually pretty split. It looks like about half of folks have filled their taxes have filed their taxes and half haven't. So that's great because um, for those who haven't, you might learn some things today um, uh, that will help you in filing those. And if you haven't because you don't think you need to, I think you'll also learn about that as well. And I think we've got, you know, 57% of uh, attendees saying they feel neutral about taxes. I think that's probably tracks with most of the population. Um, 14, 22% feel great. So, you know, maybe you can share some tips in the chat and then 21% uh, wait to the last minute to submit. And we hear that, especially during this year. So I know, um, again, many families have questions about taxes and we're uh, thrilled to be joined by some uh, guests and partner organizations. First, we're gonna he hear a presentation from Betsetic, an organization made up of attorneys and advocates that provide free legal services to those who need them most. They're gonna provide an overview of the tax filing season. Then we will hear from Golden State Opportunity, an organization that helps lower income Californians build financial well being and thrive. And their presentation will focus on California specific tax credits. And then we're going to hear from the United Ways of California, from United Ways of California, and they work to improve the health, education, and financial results for low income children and families by enhancing and coordinating the advocacy and community impact work of California's 29 local United Way chapters. And their presentation will provide information on the various supports and resources uh, to help you file your taxes. And then we'll get to your questions. So again, thanks again to those of you who submitted questions in advance. We're gonna try to get as many, um, to as many of them as to as many of them as possible, and we'll see some as they come into the chat as well. And we plan to wrap up by 6.15 uh, because we know everyone is busy. So I will turn it over to Tanya. And I am quickly gonna turn it over to our first presenter, Chris Olivarra from the Betsetic Tax Clinic, Nick first mentioned. She is the director here to provide an overview of the tax filing season. So thank you so much, Crystal, for being with us. We'll let you take it away. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and thank you for the introduction. Um, I think we'll start, uh, I'm just gonna do a basic overview so we can start with the first slide if possible. Okay, there we go. So um, those are the three things that we're gonna cover today. So next. Okay, so the first thing is basic preparation. Um, Something important to note is that the original date to file your return um, in tax day every year is April 15th. Uh, this year, the filing deadline got extended from the 15th to May 17th because I believe May 15th had fallen on a Saturday. Um, they, the 
it was extended because of the ongoing pandemic and in a large part because of the American Rescue Plan that was uh, introduced um, in early March, um, which provided some different tax provisions. And so there was an extension. And so please be aware of the extension. If you still have not filed your return, um, and you're not gonna owe taxes, but you still are required to file a return, the best thing to do is to request an extension, which you can do um, through a Vita site, tax software, or even um, using the free file, which is gonna be discussed later on in the presentation. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. Uh, you want to request an extension because if you have a filing requirement and you don't owe any money and you don't request an extension, that means that um, when you do eventually file, the IRS will penalize you for failing to file by the May 17th date. Um, on the opposite end of that, if you do owe money, um, and you request an extension, that doesn't mean that you don't have to pay what you owe. And I know that sounds really confusing, but the rule of thumb is if you owe the money, pay it by the filing deadline and payment deadline, but still request that extension so that you don't have to um, get slapped with a failure to file penalty. It gets a little complicated, um, but you just wanna keep that in mind. Uh, uh, when you're getting ready for the filing season. And especially since it's coming, I think the deadline is, yeah, in like a week. Um, so get those extensions in if you haven't filed. Um, okay, can we go to the next slide, please? And then this slide will just give you some information of the documents you should be looking out for. Um, there's so many different types of forms that report income, but one of the main ones are W-2s if you're a wage uh, earner. Um, there's a 1099 miscellaneous uh, for independent contractors. Uh, a lot of people got issued these small amounts from the Treasury Department. Some people got $15, $30, um, $100, and that's interest. And it was sent by the IRS, and it is taxable. Uh, there have been people that have been audited on some of these really small amounts, which is really odd. But anyway, it's happening. So if you receive a 1099 INT, even if it's like for $20, make sure to include that on your return. Um, and then the other very important form, especially um, during this pandemic, you want to look for a 1099G. And that is for um, certain government payments like unemployment compensation. Um, okay, we can go to the next slide. And then this slide is a little small, but it's, and you can uh, find it in publication 540, which at, on the IRS, you can literally Google IRS publication 540, I believe it is, um, so that you can see everything that you need to know to file, basically. Um, and for example, it says, okay, I'm single, I'm under 65, and I made 12,400 this year. That means that you have to file a return. You have a filing requirement. Um, if you made under that amount, that doesn't mean, okay, don't file a return because um, you could benefit from other credits if you file the return. So if you made $5,000 in the year and you have two dependent children that qualify for the earned income tax credit or the child tax credit, which has increased under the American Rescue Plan, you will benefit from a, a larger refund if you had not filed anything. And also you would get the, um, the stimulus payments if you haven't received them yet. So just because you don't have a filing obligation does not mean don't file. So this is a good chart to refer to. And um, also there are different tools and calculators on the IRS website where you can see if you qualify for the earned income tax credit and the child tax credit and, and other credits. Um, a lot of people don't know that. So it's a very, very great tool that you can use to, to kind of ballpark um, what, you're, what you would be expecting in return and if you qualify. So let's go to the next slide. Um, and then this slide will just give you some uh, filing resources. Um, 
there's the IRS free file, which is going to um, be, I believe Golden Gate is going to go into this and then, or sorry, United Way. And then um, the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Center, uh, maybe you've heard of the acronym before, VIDA. Um, so VIDA is a service that uh, is offered to those that qualify as far as income and it's free tax preparation services. Um, they won't do any complicated returns, but um, they do a lot of, of income preparation, of uh, return preparation. And so if you go on the IRS website and I provided the link in the tools, you can just Google VITA locator and it'll take you to the link. You enter your zip code and then it'll find all of the nearest VITAs in your geographic location. And you can just call them, set up an appointment and go um, get your uh, return prepared. Next. Okay. So this uh, next slide, um, is discussing ITINs. Um, the application process for the ITIN is pretty straightforward. Um, as you can see on this slide, uh, you, you complete form W-7 and you have to prepare. If you have never had an ITIN before and you wanna get one, what you have to do is two things, the W-7 application and you have to prepare a return. Now, my recommendation, and I believe, I'm sure a lot of people would recommend, and recommend that when you fill out the W-7, you want to go to a taxpayer assistance center or find a certifying acceptance agent who is able to look at your original documents and make sure that, um, kind of like check them off, and then you they mail the, um, the return and the W-7 to the IRS for processing. If you don't take them to either the center or to uh, a certifying acceptance agent, then what ends up happening is that you have to mail in your original documents to the IRS, which is fine. You end up getting them back. But the small caveat with this is during the pandemic and um, the IRS became incredibly backed up. They still are. There's tons of returns that haven't been processed. I believe it's around 23 million um, still. And so you don't want your, I mean, they had to rent out storage units to store mail. So you do not want your original documents to get caught up in one of those storage areas. So if you can find um, a certifying acceptance agent or go to a taxpayer assistance center, that would be the best. And you can Google Taxpayer Assistance Center in your geographic location um, and set up an appointment. I know the Los Angeles office is open and they are taking um, appointments. And the same application goes for renewing ITINs too, except uh, you don't have to submit a return. Um, and then this next slide, you know, why should I get an ITIN? Well, the law requires us to pay taxes regardless of status. Um, and it's incredibly useful in certain immigration proceedings. In fact, uh, filing taxes is a conditioned precedent to receiving citizenship. So a lot of the times uh, when you're going through this, especially if you're going through a removal proceeding, they wanna see at least 10 years. Um, usually, in the what we call compliance, like if we're trying to set up a client on a payment plan or resolve their account, they require the taxpayer to be in compliance for the past six years, meaning they've filed the past six years in returns. However, in the case of citizenship and removal proceedings, they want to see 10 years. Um, it doesn't mean you have to have paid all of your taxes or if you end up owing money, um, that's okay. As long as those returns are filed and you have like a plan going forward that you're going to resolve them. So that's, it, people do worry about that, but there is a resolution and it's better to file them even if you have to file all 10 years now, um, it's recommended, so. And um, the other very great thing and benefit of having an ITIN is that you get to take advantage of 
federal credits and also state credits, which is going to be discussed next, so I will not talk about those. Um, but the two federal credits that you can take advantage of are the child tax credit and the American Opportunity Credit. As you can see on the side, the child tax credit, um, the general amount for each child would be $2,000, but under the American Rescue Plan in 2021, it has increased uh, for, to $3,000 for children above six years old, I believe between six and 17, and $3,600 um, for uh, children uh, zero to six years old. And these payments are advanced payments. So even though they're technically 2021 credits, um, they have to start paying them out in July. And right now, I believe the IRS is in the process of creating a portal so that these payments can be issued. So file your returns, get your ITIN, get it going because you don't want to miss out on these credits. Um, and then same with the American Opportunity Credit, um, which can help reduce uh, educational expenses to attend college. And we'll go to the next. And then the last slide, um, this is just kind of like a roundup of all three stimulus payments. Um, as you can see, uh, there were different amounts in all three. The in the first round, um, the amount was not subject to offset, meaning um, if you had back taxes and you received this amount, it wasn't going to go and pay off your back taxes before you received the check. In the second round, um, the six hundred dollars was subject to offset, so a lot of people. Um, instead of receiving the $600, it went to their back taxes, which was super terrible. Um, the tax community went up in arms about it. <laughs> and I think that moved the needle because in round three, um, with the passing of the American Rescue Plan, um, that offset was taken away. In the middle of taking the offset away, the belief is that it changed also the second round. So some people who had been taking the $600 away actually ended up getting it and they owed back taxes. So it like changed the whole system. Um, and then in the third round, uh, the amounts were higher and also adult dependents were eligible for the credit. So if you had, um, you took care of your mom as a dependent and you had, you know, three other dependents, it was $1,400 per eligible dependent um, under round three. And also, um, two ITIN filers could uh, file a joint return. And if they had children with valid social security numbers, they would receive those $1,400 per eligible child for them. Um, so that was another big change and it was a gr really great change. And that is all for me. <laughs> Thank you, Crystal. Um, that's incredibly helpful. And, and thanks to all of you who are sending questions over in the chat. The, um, thanks, Mandy and others for um, responding to so many of them, and we will also uh, get to some in our Q&A. Um, so thank you. Next, we're going to hear from Sabrina de Santiago from Golden State Opportunity, and I'm going to uh, hand it over to her to provide information on claiming your California tax credit. Do we have Sabrina? There. I can't hear you. You, but we don't hear you. Sabrina, you may need to press the um, under interpretation, maybe try English. Hmm. Okay, we're all used to Zoom technical difficulties at this point. So um, maybe, uh, Oh, someone just heard her, they said. Um, let's see. Maybe try muting and unmuting or going to off on interpretation. Uh, 
We can I, now. We can see you. Yes, I can, I can hear you. Oh, some people can hear her. I can't hear her. Oh, if you're on the English button, you can hear her. But if you're off, you can't. Um, okay. Well, I guess. And can our translator hear her? Okay, I hear yes. So, okay, I guess go to the English button if you're listening in English, and then we can hear Sabrina. Gregory, too, if you go to English, so you can hear her, too. Okay. And just really quickly at the bottom of your screen where you see a globe, if you click on it, you can drop down and choose English or Spanish.
Thank you, Sabrina. And apologies for the technical difficulties. We will make sure we are back on track if we can before the next presenter. But I definitely want to highlight what she shared. Let's make sure we put it all on the table and get back as much as we can. There's lots of resources to help. So can we just confirm if you let us know if you can hear in the chat in English and Spanish, I see Gregory is back. So hopefully that means we're all good to go and maybe our team can just give us a quick thumbs up as well before we invite our next speaker. Yes, I love the feedback. Thank you for the yeses in the chat. So next, we are excited to hear from Matthew Canty, the Economic Justice Policy Manager for the United Ways of California. Welcome, Matthew. Thanks so much. And thank you, everyone, for your patience as we're working through things. There I see you, Matthew. Yes. Uh, thank you for having me. Wonderful to be here uh, and appreciate the introduction. Um, all right. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, jump right into it. All right, so uh, today um, what we're going to be covering is uh, the resources. Um, ironically, I had a GSS slide and then I removed it because I thought uh, Sabrina was going to do it. And now we kind of like had a little uh, switch up there. Um, but I'm totally happy to go over the GSS as well. I will, um, I'll jump into that as soon as I cover uh, this bit. But uh, yeah, what we're going to be covering is the filing and support resources. Um, how and where to file for free, and uh, also our My Free Taxes calculator um, that we have um, through our uh, through our website. Um, as uh, it was said before, my name is Matthew Canty. I'm the Economic Justice Policy Manager uh, with United Ways of California. Uh, typically, I, I work more in the uh, policy arena, uh, but today we're going to be jumping into the services uh, that we provide uh, relating to taxes. Um, so uh, we can go ahead and jump to the next slide. Uh, about how and where do I file? And it's written right here in, uh, um, uh, in English for you, myfreetaxes.org. Uh, this is our website. Um, there are several other options for, for free tax uh, service uh, websites that you can go to. Um, you know, there's Cali ITC for, EITC for me, which we saw earlier um, in another presentation. Um, there's plenty that you can look through. Um, but this is uh, the service that we provide uh, that I've, you know, been using. So this is the one that I'll be speaking about. Um, and uh, some of the things about this one that it provides, if you go to the next slide, is um, uh, what you'll is is a is a checklist of what you'll need. Um, we saw a little bit of this in the uh, in the first slide written out. And so uh, what this website also does is it provides a, a sort of a line by line checklist of things uh, that you that you should have um, so that you can get the most out of your, your tax credit and so that you can file your credit. Um, so uh, we can see here we have the W-2s, 1099, 1098, 1095A, um, and there are descriptions uh, for each of these items um, here. Um, if you are, um, if you speak a, a, a different language uh, or if and you need a, a translation actually, um, uh, our website uh, actually comes in, in several languages. Um, so, um, you know, for folks who, who might not be able to read all of this uh, in English, um, don't worry about that. That is all covered. Uh, that can all be easily addressed um, once we get to the website portion, which I'll be getting to. Um, so, yeah, as you can see here, these are the things that you need to file your tax return. And then on the next slide, you're going to see the things that will also help out. And these are the additional documents. These are things like business expenses, charitable donations, child care. Uh, do you own a home or do you rent? Um, do you, uh, are you, are you in school um, or, or are you a, a teacher? You know, these kinds of expenses, uh, you know, these are all things that can, that can help, that can add to your credit or, or benefit you in some ways. Um, and so it's good to have things you need. And of course, uh, the extra is because of course you want to get as much as you can uh, from this process. Um, and if you don't have these, go ahead, go to the next slide. Now, if you don't have all of this on you right now, 
but you still wanna get an idea of what this is going to look like. We also have a calculator on our website too that will allow you to get an estimate or an idea of uh, what kind of refund you're looking at. Uh, I was playing with the calculator just uh, the other night, actually. Um, it's very simple to use, it's very easy. Um, you quite literally would just plug in um, your annual salary or a guess at what your annual salary is and uh, your number of people in your household uh, and then their ages. Uh, we heard about the young child tax credit earlier. So, you know, if you have people five years or under in your house, there's gonna be uh, a larger credit there. So, uh, you, you know, you plug in these, these bits of information and then um, as you do that, uh, you just hit enter and then it'll plug all of that in. And it'll say an estimate of what, uh, of what your, your credit would look like. Um, that's just something uh, that, we, that we, that's a service that we provide um, uh, in addition to actually, uh, so, so you get an idea of that before you file, you can have a, a vision of what it's going to look like. Um, moving forward, um, we also have uh, several resources available as well. Um, uh, such as an ITIN guide uh, that's also on our myfreetaxes.org website. Uh, this ITIN guide um, goes over uh, everything that the uh, that uh, I believe it was our bet uh, presenter went over uh, relating to uh, you know how do you know uh, if you qualify for an ITIN. Uh, for those of you uh, who might not be familiar with the term, that's an individual uh, tax identification number. Um, uh, typically goes to people who do not have a social security number um, who are uh, in the immigrant community. Um, uh, and then this, uh, th this guide also gives you a walkthrough of, uh, you know, what you need to qualify, uh, how to avoid scams. Uh, we also go uh, into, into the process of it. Um, you know, the, 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 the process to get an ITIN, it can be somewhat lengthy. Uh, so certainly, um, if you haven't started yet, uh, it's great to get started as early as possible um, because uh, the processing of it, once you file for it, it, it can take several months and, um, you know, you won't be able to receive your credit or uh, your stimulus uh, until, until you get that uh, taken care of. Um, so uh, let's get started on the website uh, and then we can, uh, we can talk about, I see some questions popping up, um, so I'll, I'll get to those as soon as we get through this here. Um, so we can go ahead and get started on the on the next slide. So let's say you get to myfreetaxes.org, you get to the website, uh, step one, uh, move to the next slide, please. Uh, so for step one, it's really simple. Uh, you can see our, our whole, uh, this, is, this is our homepage here. Um, you can see that there is an option for, uh, you can get help or you can do it on your own. There's also in the top right hand corner, a select language option. Uh, this, uh, this website comes in, uh, in seven different languages. Uh, so uh, if you're non-English speaking, that's fine. We've got English, Chinese, German, French, Japanese, Korean, and Spanish. Uh, and so, uh, you know, if you're non-English speaking, go ahead and just hit that select language bar and you'll see uh, all of this information will appear in, in those languages. Um, uh, so moving forward from that, go ahead and you click my on my own. Uh, once you get there, uh, you just have to fill in a little bit of information. Uh, your zip code is required, first name, last name, uh, contact information for your, your phone and your email. You'll see in the bottom right hand corner, there's a little chat with Gloria uh, button that you can click on as well. Gloria uh, speaks English and Spanish and she's a computer, uh, but she can provide technical assistance or she can answer questions and provide additional resources uh, while you're filling out information. So if you're confused about something and you don't want to have to click on too many tabs and go back and forward, uh, she, she, can, she can help you out with some of that. Um, so after you click file remotely with the virtual help, uh, you're gonna have our next step where you get redirected to myfreetaxes.com. You'll have one more option uh, to, um, uh, to, to, to select uh, to do this uh, by myself. Um, the reason for this is because you've just gone from myfreetaxes.org, which is the resource page with, with all of that. And now you're at myfreetaxes.com. This is where you're actually going to do the filing. Um, we can go ahead and go to the next one now. 
Uh, and so once uh, we're there, once you once once you hit myfreetaxes.com um, and you select file on my own, you are going to be sent a confirmation link. Might take a while to receive. It might go to your your junk folder, um, but uh, uh, or your spam folder. But um, but once you receive this confirmation link, um, what that where that is going to take you um, is to the filing software. Um, that way it's, um, you know, your, your privacy, your security, everything is protected through that. Uh, the, the, soft, the software that we use is, uh, it's called TaxLayer and it's provided through our United Way uh, worldwide partners. Um, uh, so it's totally safe and um, gets great results. Uh, and then uh, what it's fairly quick and easy. Once again, as long as you have the resources uh, or the, the documents that we went over in the beginning. Um, and then uh, last but not least, uh, for the final slide here, uh, we have, um, uh, if, if there are still uh, questions that any of you have uh, regarding um, re really anything, we, we have a, a text 211, 211 service here. Um, you can uh, text Golden or Dorado or taxes. Um, you text any of those words to, to this number, 211, 211. This is an opt-in program. And so you'll receive um, important information, uh, you know, about deadlines, filing, taxes, resources. Um, this is, uh, you know, uh, for people like me who need a, a notification or a push to be reminded, oh yeah, I need to do that thing so I can get my credit, um, comes in really handy. Uh, and there, uh, 2111 also, uh, also provides a lot of other services too. Um, and that for another presentation in another town hall, we can get into that. But um, for taxes, it's also great and useful. Um, once again, my name is Matthew Canty, UWCA, and uh, thank you for having me. And uh, we can move on to the next section now or uh, questions or whatever you like. Thank you, Matt and Sabrina and Crystal and Nick and everyone. Now is the time for Q&A and I have to pop over to a teacher appreciation event. I get to leave you in the hands of my trusted colleague, Nick, for all of your Q&A in the next 15 minutes. Take it away, Nick. Great. I appreciate our teachers. I also appreciate our tax preparers. So thank you all. Great. So if I can have the screen, let's have the slide come down so we can pin um, our presenters. Um, wonderful. And thank you for putting great questions into the chat. Thank you also for um, Mandy and Sabrina and others for answering those questions in real time. So can I have our folks come back on camera? Um, thank you, Matt. And it's um, great. Crystal and Sabrina. Wonderful. So, and thank you, um, Mandy, who's been uh, rapidly responding to questions on the chat. So we had some questions come in and um, ahead of time. We had some that are still coming in. We've got about 15 minutes. And so we wanna get to some of them. So I will just start um, and feel free. I mean, some of them, maybe I'll call on specific folks, but um, then uh, anyone can, can chime in. And so one, just because we've heard a lot about um, iTunes, so Crystal, one question we got is, how do I know if I qualify for an ITIN to do my taxes? And then a more specific one, I just renewed my ITIN, so I'm waiting for my new one to come in the mail. Do you think I'll be able to do my taxes this year and get the stimulus? Yeah, so the first one, I think Matt covered it. Um, you know, you qualify for an ITIN um, if you don't have a social security number and that's and you have to have a federal tax filing obligation. So if you don't have a social and you have a federal tax fi filing obligation, then you qualify for an ITIN. The second question um, is actually a very important question and it comes up often. Um, if you have not so if you have an expired ITIN, that was the question, right? The renewal? Yeah. Okay. So if you have an expired ITIN, um, in a perfect world, you would renew your ITIN, you would get that new, you know, the renewal back, you would file your return and life goes on. Um, but we're not living in a perfect world right now. So the advice is... Um, you do not have to request an extension. You can actually file your, um, you can do the renewal. Even though it's pending, you file your return. So the question is, okay, well, what happens when I file my return? Will my tax return get processed with my old ITIN number? So when you actually do that, the IRS takes it and it's like, 
not process, but they put it in this limbo status um, because you're kind of non-existent at that point in the system. And while the I-10 is processing, hopefully it kind of happens at the same time once they receive your return. And then the number is the same exact number. You don't get issued a brand new number. It's like a social security number. So once that number gets uh, renewed, then the return will get processed and you'll receive your refund or whatever uh, act thing comes after that. Um, let's say that it's taking too long for your item to renew, right? And you're still in that limbo status. So the IRS may send you a letter that says, hey, you need to renew your item. If you've already renewed the item, all you have to do is wait. There could be situations where it gets into a get uh, getting a deficiency, like you owe a tax or something like that, but that's like way down the line and not likely to happen, but you still have proof that, hey, I filed the I-10 renewal. It's just taking forever because of the pandemic. So you can still file a return with an expired I-10. Just make sure you renew the I-10 as well, either before or right after. Great. That's helpful. And just while, so for you still, so one question we got is I didn't do my taxes in 2019. In 2020, they were late. Can I submit them this year? Looks like you're maybe having trouble un unmuting, but I'm seeing nods, I'm seeing nods. So, and maybe someone, one of our tech folks can help Crystal unmute. Um, yes, I wasn't able to unmute myself. Um, yes, if you didn't file your return and you owe taxes, definitely still file. Um, there's a lot of organizations out there that can help you with the payment plan. We're one of them. So um, don't let you owing taxes deter you from filing, especially if you're an ITIN holder and you want to establish citizenship, you want to get on the ball. Great. Okay, so some more questions for you, but Sabrina, let's go to you or someone maybe from Golden State, one question, are there credits for purchasing hybrid vehicles or for first time home buyers? So I think that's a question about federal tax credits. Here, Sabrina, we'll, we'll put you on the... Sabrina, maybe if you click interpretation and go to off instead of English, everyone might be able to hear you. Testing, hello? I can hear her. <laughs> Folks can hear me? Great. Um, so is that a question about the federal or the state? Um, for those, we're an organization that's more focused on um, the Cali ATC and the low income credits, but there are different credits available for folks and we'd be happy to share some resources to follow up. Great. Um, and uh, so there were, there were a few questions that came in about married, you know, um, married couples filing jointly. Or one question we got ahead of time was, I'm married and filed my taxes alone. Can this affect us in the future? Um, and I know there was another one that came in specifically about some of these credits. So does anyone want to take, um, if you're married and filed, filing alone, can that affect you in the future? What advice do we have for those folks? So for folks who are married, uh, for the Cali ITC, they must file married filing jointly if you're married. Um, you can do revisions to your taxes though, to go back. Uh, the VITA sites, I know that they are very crowded at the moment and don't get, and may not have appointments available, but there is some free assistance. So there's, if you're looking to revise your tax years back and you think you're gonna be owed more, um, you can still do that even after the May 17th deadline if you don't owe taxes. Uh, for federal, though, as Crystal mentioned, um, you should get the extension. Great. And um, let's see, one that came in during the conversation, bouncing around here just based on, on what's coming in, but this is from a student who said, my dad filed um, in his 2020 taxes, but doesn't have papers. Is he is just wondering if my family or younger, are, or younger sibling are eligible for this program. I think that came in when Sabrina, you were presenting, but can you, I know this came up a little bit on a few presentations, but for folks who are undocumented, um, but filed taxes, are they eligible for all the programs that were being discussed, just some of them? Just some of them. So federal programs have um, most of the benefits require citizenship 
or permanent residence of some sort or a work permit. Um, for, Cal for the Cali ITC though, and the Golden State Stimulus, there is not a requirement that folks be have uh, a social security number. So you can file with an ITIN, but you must have an ITIN when you file to claim uh, your Golden State Stimulus and your Cali ITC and potentially your Young Child Tax Credit as well. Got it. And if any of our other presenters want to chime in at um, points, just let us know. Um, one question that just came in, which I think is a very good one, is just um, how much do we have to make to file taxes? Um, and I know there was some talk about some of these being refundable, but how, I mean, how much do we have to make to file taxes? Um, so I shared that um, a little bit in my slide earlier, but for single filers, um, under the age of 65, the, the threshold amount is 12,200. So that's to let you know, hey, you have a filing obligation. If you're below that, you technically don't have to file a return. Um, obviously, if you're above that, you do have to file. But if you're below, you technically are not required to file a return. But like I mentioned before, um, that doesn't mean you shouldn't file one because you can benefit from the credits that we've been discussing in the presentation. Matt, Matt, do you want to chime in? Oh, no, I mean, that's a perfect answer. Uh, I guess the only thing I might add uh, is that um, it's going back to a, a previous question about um, someone had asked, can I file taxes uh, going uh, backwards? Um, and we did mention the Golden State stimulus a bit. Um, you need to have filed your 2020 taxes uh, to receive the Golden State stimulus. So if you didn't file taxes, um, you know, uh, this past year, uh, that that's something that um, definitely um, will need to be done to, to be able to do that. Hello, Nick. This is um, Evan Phoenix. For some reason, it's showing up as Crystal Ibarra as well, maybe because I'm partnered with uh, Crystal. <laughs> um, so I'm an ABA tax fellow and I'm working with Crystal at the tax clinic. I just wanted to also add that the figures that we're discussing right now are for people like people who are have W two salary jobs, um, but the amount is five hundred no four hundred dollars. The IRS says that if you earn four hundred dollars or more, if you're self employed, then you have a legal requirement to file, and you should also make to um, estimated payments throughout the year to prevent yourself from having any like, severe taxes towards the end. So the those amounts are for people who are working W two jobs. There's a different amount for people who are working self employed which is $400. Great, and that actually was a question we got about someone who was self-employed this last year. So thanks for jumping in on that one. Well, for you, for either Crystal, um, one question we got in 2020, my two adult children lived together and worked full-time. Can my son claim his sister as a dependent who went to school full-time or do they need to file separately? So again, two adult children living together, one, um, I guess one's now working and the other's going to school. Can the old can the son file his sister as a dependent? I know. So, yeah. There we go. Uh, so you know, it, it appears that they would probably meet the relationship test, but it depends on if the sister made any income at all, um, how much support was uh, the other sibling providing. I wasn't sure if it was brother or sister. Um, and uh, if they were, they were obviously living together for more than half the year. So as long as they meet certain tests and they can go, I honestly don't recall the publication number. I'm not sure if Evan does. Um, you can definitely check it out on the website or you can, um, you can feel free to reach out to us for a consultation since it, it, it it's, requires a little bit more specific facts on who's who and, and who played what role and stuff. Yeah, and that's a good reminder. I mean, there are some specific questions coming in the chat and feel free to reach out to bd4info at lusd.net or bd7 at lusd.net um, and we can connect you with our partners for more specific questions. Um, the one question, you know, I think maybe this was Sabrina's presentation, but we got a question. We're, right now we're spending a great deal on childcare. Is there a fund to assist or how does this affect taxes? And a similar question, you know, that was answered in the presentation, but maybe we can reiterate. At what ages do children qualify for refunds? I assume the earned income tax credit or the child care tax credit, excuse me. And I have three children and none of them have received a refund. Are we eligible? 
So lots of different questions there, all sort of under one umbrella. Um, in terms of childcare credits, there are credits. Um, it'll depend on each individual's um, income levels, how much is deductible. Uh, they should really speak one-on-one, uh, -on -one, but there are cre credits for childcare. Um, I claimed them myself on my return. Um, so I know those are important to helping with the cost of childcare, which we know in California is, and especially Los Angeles is very expensive. Uh, the other asked questions about the age. So for the young child tax credit in California, your child should be under the age of six. Um, so they would have to have not turned six by the end of the previous tax year. Um, for the other question, the federal credits have a slightly different age bracket. Um, they go up all the way up to uh, 17 and 18 year olds. So those, they were, the federal credits would be different than the young child tax credit. And what was the last question? I feel like there was something else in there. <laughs> I lost track um, of it. No, I think it was the, the, what age children qualify. I, it was just a, I, a fact pattern. I have three children, none of them qualified are we eligible so I think you got to those um and then maybe maybe for Matthew um we you know besides myfreetaxes.org we got a question are there other places to file taxes for free where can folks go call if they have these more specific um uh, yeah you know? absolutely there are you know uh, as I had mentioned in my in my presentation there there are a ton of of, of, uh, of places um online that folks can go um, I know Golden State Opportunity has uh, a, a similar pro uh, program, um, uh, uh, EITC for me, uh, um, and uh, there's uh, there's um, a, a lot of other ones. Um, but um, you know, certainly, like this is the one that I, that I know of the best, um, and that I think provides uh, the best service. Um, there's as far as vi as far as places to go, um, free tax preparation assistance or VITA volunteer income tax assistance. Um, there are sites that exist, but, um, after the, uh, you know, the sort of everything that happened with COVID, um, and the quarantines, uh, these sites were devastated, um, and a lot of them were forced to, to shut down their services, um, and since these are volunteer providers, uh, who provide a free service, um, the recovery of that, uh, has been, uh, fairly limited. There has been some, uh, but those spots, um, have been, uh, they fill up very, very quickly. Um, what I would say is, uh, you know, there are, there's ways to, to find them though. Certainly, um, you know, you'd mentioned, uh, you know, we've got about 28 local United Way sites up and down California. I'm with the United Ways of California. So we're the state chapter, uh, but there are, um, you know, there is a United Way LA, there's a United Way Northern region, there, there's Santa Cruz, like whatever city you're in, there, there is a, probably a United Way there, a local chapter, and um, they can, they, uh, they can provide um, where there are, uh, they, they all provide these services, and they, they all provide, they can provide where these services um, are, are, can be, can be uh, received. Um, again, though, uh, the in-person services, um, they're, they're very, very limited. Um, so uh, at this point, um, you know, uh, you know, no harm in calling, no harm in reaching out. Uh, but yeah, online is for free services. Uh, online is probably going to be the, the best place uh, and the quickest place to go. Great. Well, thank you. I know we're, we're a little over time and questions are still coming in. So I'm going to just reiterate bd4 info at lusd.net, bd7 at lusd.net. We can put that in the chat um, and we will you can respond to emails in English and Spanish. And, and if there are other languages, we will get, um, get those translated and get your questions answered. So a huge thank you to all of our presenters for the valuable information. Um, you know, I think at the beginning, going back to the poll, about half of you participating hadn't yet filed. So hopefully you learned some um, helpful information about when you need to file, how to file um, and what you and why you should file. Uh, whether because it's the law in, in a lot of circumstances or uh, most importantly for the purpose of us doing this presentation was because there's money on the table um, and it's your money. You, we pay taxes and um, you've earned these credits. And so uh, please do reach out to us if there are specific questions. But again, thank you to um, United Ways, Metsetic, uh, Golden State Opportunity. So appreciate it. I know I learned some stuff. 
Um, and we appreciate your time on this Thursday evening. Uh, you can see, we're just sharing a few additional resources up here on the slide. Um, our general hotline at LA Unified, our mental health hotline, our special education hotline, and some stuff about our return to campus uh, and recovery programs. Um, we, uh, again, I wanna also thank our teams, Board District 4 and Board District 7 for helping with the tech and um, putting this together and answering your questions uh, throughout the last hour. Um, and thank you most particularly to our parents and families for joining us. We know you have so much going on um, and we appreciate you tuning in to learn some stuff. Uh, your feedback is so helpful to us as we plan future town halls. We wanna make sure we're providing information that's, that's relevant and useful to the community. So if you have a moment, please fill out the exit survey either when you leave this Zoom or the one that is in the chat. Um, because it will help us um, make sure we have content that is relevant. So again, I'm just going to end with that BD4 info at LUSD.net, BD7 at LUSD.net. Um, thank you uh, again to our presenters, to all of you for joining, and I hope everyone has a wonderful Thursday evening.